the endocrine system of the body has different types of hormones that it can release in order to affect the internal environment of the body. We have steroidal hormones, we have non-steroidal hormones, and within the non-steroidal hormones, we have protein and peptide hormones, and we have amino acid hormones. The steroidal-based hormones are uh, derived from cholesterols, which is a type of lipid, so think fat here. Um, we're going to be talking about how that changes their function a little bit. Uh, the non-steroidal hormones on the other side Side are some form of amino acid or protein, so that also affects how it can get through the body and get into cells or affect cells. Um, so for the steroidal hormones here, some example glands and some example uh, hormones from those glands are the adrenal cortex, which releases cortisone and aldosterone, the ovaries, which release estrogen and progesterone, the testes, which release testosterone. So those are some important uh, steroidal-based hormones. For the non-steroidal hormones, as I already mentioned, there's some sort of protein or a peptide or amino acid, and those are going to uh, come from lots of different glands as well. Some example glands and hormones from those glands are the pancreas, which releases glucagon and insulin, uh, the pituitary gland, which releases growth hormone. All of these are forms of protein or peptide hormones. Uh, for the amino acid type hormones, um, which again was is within the non-steroidal hormone umbrella. We have the thyroid gland, which releases thyroxine or T4 and triiodothyronine or T3. And we have the adrenal medulla gland, uh, which releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. So we have lots of different types of hormones, uh, different classifications of hormones, and these classifications do affect the function of the hormones. Looking at the steroidal hormones functions first, they are based on lipids, so they are not water soluble. Think about oil and water and how they don't mix. This does affect the ability of these hormones to get through the blood because the blood is mostly water. So they do require some sort of protein carrier, as we can see here by this gray structure uh, suggesting a protein carrier. Uh, they need a protein carrier in, or a carrier in order to get around the blood in throughout the body. Once they get to the cell of uh, that they're trying to act on, the protein carrier will be removed from the hormone. The hormone goes right through the cell membrane because it's based on lipids, and the cell membrane is a bilayer lipid membrane, so it is fat soluble, which is primarily what the membrane is made out of. And that hormone can go right in and bind with the cell receptor that's either in or near the nucleus. If it's near the nucleus, it typically goes inside the nucleus once it's bound in order to act on the DNA. So once it acts on the DNA, it's going to activate it to produce messenger RNA or mRNA, which comes out into the cytosol, interacts with the ribosomes to create new proteins. So these, this process is essentially going to create new machinery within the cell. Once we create this new machinery, this machinery can then act and do things that will cause the cell to work in a certain way. So this process oftentimes is longer and slower because we're creating new machinery, but it's going to be longer acting and it's going to have major impacts on the, the functions of that cell. The other major hormone Hormone type is the non-steroidal hormones, which includes those proteins, peptides, and amino acid-based hormones. These, because they are proteins, they are not lipid-based, they are water-soluble but not fat-soluble or not lipid-soluble. So these hormones can go right through the blood on their own without the need for a protein carrier like these steroidal hormones need. However, once they get to their cell that they're trying to uh, affect, they cannot go through the membrane because the membrane is a bilayer lipid membrane and it's not fat soluble or it's lipid soluble. So the hormone must bind to a receptor on the outside of that cell. Once it binds to that receptor, it's going to activate a second messenger. Uh, there are lots of different types of second messengers, and these second messengers then go and carry out the function of that hormone within the cell. So they can interact with the DNA, affecting the proteins of the cell, um, but oftentimes will act within the cytosol of the cell um, without interacting directly with the, the nucleus in the, in the DNA. So with this being said, if it's not acting on the, the nucleus, it's essentially not creating new machinery like the steroidal hormones are. It's going to increase or decrease the activity of the, the machinery that's already within the cell. So this can be a lot faster than creating new machinery like the uh, steroidal hormones are trying to do, but it is a shorter acting type of hormone typically. 
Sometimes you'll hear about a third class of hormones called prostaglandins. They're not real hormones. They are pseudo hormones, meaning fake hormones, because they don't actually act the way other hormones do. Instead of being released into the bloodstream to float around the whole body to affect cells in distant locations, they are typically paracrine in action. We'll talk about that in a second. So prostaglandins are derived from arachidonic acid. Uh, an example of a prostaglandin is cyclooxygenase. And as an example of a real world interaction that we have with cyclooxygenase is uh, drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen that work to block the enzymes of cyclooxygenase. And the reason why they work to block those enzymes is typically, as I already mentioned, prostaglandins are paracrine. They are released from one cell, typically acting on neighboring cells rather than floating through the bloodstream and affecting the body uh, body wide. They are released by that cell when that cell is damaged or when there's some form of illness or infection going on and they initiate the inflammatory response. So they initiate swelling, vasodilation, which helps with the swelling. They also sensitize nociceptors, which are the neurons that are responsible for sensing pain. All of this is often associated with injury. Hormone actions are impacted by the quantity of hormones as well as the number of receptors in the area. So I'm gonna be covering that in another video.